All rise. The morning, January 28, 2013, South Bend, Kevin Thompson. Is now in session. We have Jan Hall for the invocation. We <laughs> all bow your heads with me as we pray. Loving and gracious God, you are indeed the giver of all good gifts, and we thank you tonight for all your blessings and for the successful outcomes of all that is before our council members. We ask that you bless each of them abundantly and that you continue to fill them with your wisdom, your guidance, your courage, and your strength. Be with them in every deliberation and help them to be wise in decisions for the good of all of those who place their trust and their confidence in their leadership. Give them insight into and to lead them with integrity that their decisions may reflect what is right and what is good. We ask as well that you divinely set in motion new developments, new business opportunities that will cause our city to be strong and to be prosperous. And now, Father, may we all be reminded of the word, James 3.17, wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. In your precious name, we say, Amen. So what are you doing? Please. Mr. Scott, present. Mr. Henry Davis, ready to Mrs. Shea, here. Dr. Burke, here. Mm -hmm. Dr. Burke, present. Vice President Albert, here. Vice President. Council Member White, present. Mr. Burke, here. President Davis, present. Mr. Burke, thank you. May I have a report from the subcommittee on minutes? To the Common Council of the City of South Bend, the subcommittee has inspected the minutes of the January 14, 2013 meeting of the Council and found them to be correct. Therefore, we recommend the same be approved. Signed, Derek Schneider, David Brown. Please have accepted the minutes of the Second. Good motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. Under special business, this council is still taking applications for all of the committees that the council has, also some other committees that I'll mention in a second. These applications will stop on midnight on January 31st. They are in the clerk's office and also online. Of the 10 standing committees the council has, we also have openings on the Century Center Board, Redevelopment Board, Historic Preservation, Human Rights, and Urban Enterprise Zone. So if you'd like to serve on any of those committees, go to the city website and put an application or come up and see John Roy in his office daily and get an application from him. Thank you. Now, can we get a report? But Dr. Warner, take this. Yeah, it's come to my attention recently that there's a new uh, organization recently organized in the city of South Bend which attempts to provide uh, music and I believe uh, dance art uh, to individuals who don't necessarily want to get into a formal program. Uh, pretty much anyone uh, seems to be a very welcoming place. I just became aware of it. Uh, Ms. Mullen is the administrator. Uh, I thought she should have an opportunity to, to make a brief presentation to let the city, more of the city, know about what a nice little thing we have going here. Good morning, guys. <laughs> I'm really happy to tell you about the Music Village. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Thank you for the invitation. Music Village, right now, the thing of where we are, we're located in the JMS building, just down the street of the block, in the world level. We have 3,000 square feet of um, space that we're describing to us as a place where old office furniture went to die. And we transformed it to a really dynamic place, um, which you'll see in some of the slides. Um, what is it? The new village um, is not allowed to be the only town school phone booth in Chicago. Um, it's a community like the phone right here in the town of South Bend that seeks to expand opportunities for musical arts um, for people of all ages and interests and backgrounds. Again, the model that the old town school phone booth 
some of you may know what the Old Town School is. It started 55 years ago. And it's been a lot of years. And it's been a lot of years. And it's been a lot of
time, some really lovely offers of three buildings because we believe that that's just a, a, a big part of who we are and what we want to do about. Um, the mission is fourfold. Building community through music. Becoming a valuable asset of the growing young community. Um, encouraging people to engage in music in their daily lives. And to be a part of the cultural and economic force that is there are no grades. This, I love, this is my favorite game from all the ones that we have. So, um, there's some really lovely research that's coming out of Hopkins right now, um, in the past couple of years actually, that people who engage in music, actively engage in music, as Dr. Barner pointed out, these aren't the folks that will go on tour. They don't want to be able to handle but they, they want music as a part of their our lives. Um, the folks who do that, who actively engage in it, in the community particularly, are better problem solvers. They're more creative. They're less stressed. They're healthier. And they're more collaborative and cooperative. These are all good things for a community. Um, some of the things that we're offering right now, banjo, piano, hammer, dulcimer, violin, vocal coaching, guitar, and bass, those are just the instruments we do. In addition, the dance class we're taking off. We just had the international folk dance community who been meeting in South Bend for 20 years. They came in and they came to us and said, we've been doing for 20 years. We, we've got a group of people, like lots of people come in, and sometimes they don't want to rest on their right. There's some fundamentals here that have to be covered. Can we launch a class here? We worked up a curriculum. They came in with a presentation. That class launched in seven days of eight years. So everything that we've done has been in response to what the community has asked for. If you had told me we'd be offering a habit of ultimate class, I would have questioned you. <laughs> so, um, but people started sending in questionnaires to our website, and we put the word out towards our vast music community. And our Hammer's ultimate instructor is Ted Yoder, who happens to be the 2010 National Hammer's ultimate champion. We think that this school is a really cool idea. So good, good stuff. Um, another thing that we do, um, actually the Old Town City doesn't do, and we've had conversations with them about this. They haven't really figured out how to tap into our daily discussions. And we've been approached by a couple of different organizations about that particular thing. So I would like to say that we particularly trained that stuff. We also practice that whoever can participate is welcome to come. So we've got an example of that is the Sunshine Dancers. They are a gold medal Special Olympics ballroom dance team of Down syndrome on the belt. And we're looking for a new place to train and switch training. As luck would have it, our ballroom dance instructor is an award winning ballroom dance competitive dancer. Familiar with competition guidelines, really happy about this opportunity. Um, so now they train in our studio. Um, oh, here's another example. We were approached by a grade school, and we've now had over 150 um, middle school kids come through in groups of 25 for an emergency day in the downtown. <laughs> So our David Seymour, who teaches Latin dance for us, um, was able to arrange his work day to accommodate his schedule. And 25 kids came over. They took a photo lesson, um, learned where it came from, how it came to be in the United States, what some information about that. Then they sat for a presentation by a Notre Dame representative who gave them a, um, a talk on some part of the Spanish speaking world of studying. Then they walked downtown to El Paraiso for lunch. So they came through the downtown and participated, and we got to be a part of this really cool experience for them. So for years, and we said yes. So it's more fun stuff that's going on. Um, funding. We are registered with the state of Indiana as a nonprofit. We are currently awaiting our tax exempt status. That's been so we applied in May of 2012, and there are currently the new applications that were filed in March of 2012. So our donations, while they're not tax exempt, we anticipate receiving it, and then it's retroactive. Our student enrollment support school, we are also um, dependent on volunteers as any nonprofit, particularly startups. 
2013 as National School Counseling Week in South Bend, Indiana. Thank you, Council Member and Committee of the Whole Chairperson Karen White. Thank you so much. I would like to have uh, members from the IU South Bend faculty and students from the Human Resource and Counseling Program to join me at the podium at this time. Come on, let's go. I'm very happy to be able to sponsor this resolution in recognition of National School Counseling Week in South Bend, Indiana. And I will read it as follows. Whereas the South Bend Common Council recognizes that school counselors are employed in public and private schools to help students reach their full potential, and whereas school counselors are actively committed to helping students discover their abilities, their strengths, interests, and talents as these traits relate to career awareness and development, and whereas school counselors help parents focus on ways to further the educational, personal, and social growth of their children, and whereas school counselors work closely with teachers and other educators to help students discover their individual potential and set realistic goals for themselves, and whereas school counselors seek to identify and utilize community resources that can enhance a comprehensive school counseling program and help students become productive members of society, and whereas a comprehensive development school counseling program are considered a very important part of the educational process that enables all students to achieve success in school. Now, therefore, be it resolved by this Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, as follows. Section 1. The Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, believes now more than ever, in light of the many challenges facing our educational school systems, from funding to safety, that key individuals which can and will continue to contribute to positive youth engagement are the critical role which school counselors have day in and day out. Section 2. The council therefore declares that the week of February 4, 2013 as National School Counseling Week in South Bend, Indiana and thanks all school counselors for their many contributions aimed at the betterment of our youth. Section 3. This resolution shall be in full force and effect from and after its adoption by the Council and final approval of the Mayor. I ask for your support. At this time, we do have representatives. I would ask that you give them an opportunity to speak at this time. Good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. My name is uh, Dr. Yvonne Maria. I am a faculty at IUSB in the Counseling and Human Services Department. And we are very pleased this evening that the City Council has adopted this resolution and is uh, supportive of school counseling, not just in South Bend, but nationally. We are here, my students are here, well representing what we can do and what we have done in schools K-12 to uh, throughout the state of uh, Indiana and nationally. We are here to do developmental guidance and counseling. We work with personal social issues of students, academic issues, as well as career issues. We try to make sure that we use data to plan all our programs. We also use data to make sure that our students are finding resources in our communities. And so we'd like to thank you, Karen White, and the City Council. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? <laughs> Counselor, seriously, no one wants to speak? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Okay, thank you. Thank thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone like to speak in favor of this? Okay. I see no one in opposition. Council, any comments? Yes, I have um, Mr. Scooby's coming. Oh, oh, there, there you go. Oh, I have a support. This is in favor, right? Good afternoon. My name is Huey Scobie, PO Box 3594, South Bend, Indiana. I would like to uh, speak in favor of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Now, Councilor Oliver. Yes, Mr. President. As a um, school social worker who has served in the past in Southern schools and has worked with uh, school counselors, I truly um, rise in support of this amendment and um, this um, resolution because I have personally seen the works and what school counselors can do in terms of um, children, in terms of students, in terms of parents, as we all work together to make our schools safer and stronger. And um, again, I applaud your profession, and I want to wish you the best as you continue to bring uh, our children up to the high standards that they know that they can be. Very good. Mr. Scott? I just want to thank you for uh, basically your service and what an important role, and uh, this is a very good resolution. Therefore, may I have a motion? Oh, go ahead, ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> Candace Clark. I live at 2141 Hollywood Place, South in Indiana, and... Right? Okay. <laughs> Remember that one I before? Yes, um, and I just want to, again, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here on, on behalf of the resolution, and thank you to Representative Karen White. And, again, um, just stressing how important it is that this is passed to really start to um, celebrate and raise an awareness of what school counselors do in our corporations, um, not only as as Dr. Larry spoke about in areas such as academics and career and college, vocational training, things like that, and social and emotional issues, but also as uh, allowing us to um, work as advocates for our students and to give students who don't have a voice a voice in the process. Thank you. All right. Council, any others? No? Again, thank all of you. Uh, I don't know if I have to leave okay. a motion to adapt. Motion to that back. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. So, as I mentioned earlier on today, this is uh, um, these, these 
how we bring through our core are really functions of your Cold War in the 1950s. Uh, that in many communities, those who have sought to address that and convert them back into the street and stuff, you know, we found that they were down now. Thank you, Council. Eric Horvath, Public Works Director for St. Florida's Building. Um, I wanted to also address that uh, some of the questions were in relation to previous studies. No, you don't hear. No, we'll I don't think it's on. The microphone's not on. Yeah, it's on the little I'll talk a little bit about the uh, previous studies that were done. Uh, in 2006, uh, there was a two-way traffic study done in the downtown that included uh, Michigan, St. Joe, and Maine. Uh, one-way pair to uh, look at the translating those into two ways from Central Marion to Darst, the South Sample. Uh, and that basically looked at different alternatives and analyzed those on in relation to traffic flow as well as parking uh, and looked at recommendations to converting those to two ways. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, there was a study done in 2011 that specifically focused in on William and Lafayette, also in the same uh, regard as looking at taking those one ways back to two ways, uh, like they were many years ago. Um, and that uh, went all the way through to uh, having actual plans ready to go in terms of converting those two streets back to two way streets. Um, the most recent study is essentially expanding the scope of the 2006 study and taking it a step further. Um, so it, it's taking a more holistic approach of looking at the whole system in terms of traffic flow and parking, uh, making sure that uh, it'll work. There we go. Um, and um, it, so it essentially uh, expand the first study that was done in 2006 to go all the way down to Chippewa uh, and we'll update the model that was used uh, to look at new assumptions as well as new traffic count data. And, uh, and then those inputs will give us a better idea of uh, both the level of service of the intersections as well as the arterial uh, level of service to make sure that we can still get traffic flow through uh, downtown at, at an acceptable level of service as well as uh, look at the parking issues associated with converting the one way into two ways. Beyond that, real quick, um, that study will go a step further to take that 10% conceptual design, which the previous one did not, um, and we'll put together opinions of probable cost, recommended streetscape improvements, and there will be coordination with Transpo, NDOT, MACOG, um, Emergency Responders Memorial Hospital. Part of the process will make, be making sure there's coordination with all those entities as well. Okay, thank you. Could you get it, uh, send to the council all of the studies that have been previously done? And then uh, Council Member Davis will probably be sometime in February. I don't know which meeting, but we'll reschedule that. Uh, we'll, we'll, I can send you the, uh, the first two studies. The current one is underway, and we expect um, that to be completed in about 90 days. Okay. You want to spend this first two? Any other questions on this for the council? Sure. Go ahead. Um, one thing that I, I want to... Um, to make clear, uh, and this is a question I wanted to ask earlier, but uh, it's not a question, but this is a comment. Um, when we began these studies, for whatever reason we're making the study for or we're trying to figure out, uh, one thing about this traffic study, uh, uh, traffic is extremely important to any city. Uh, it, it will obviously let someone know whether the city is viable or not. Uh, there needs to be an end game in this. Uh, there was a brief discussion earlier about uh, two-way streets in downtown Chicago and how they could or could not work. But at the end of the day, obviously, they are working because you see them working. Uh, but the traffic is there because they, people are going to something. There's a destination. Uh, there's something to arrive at. So in changing traffic patterns, uh, in the thought of it may be great in theory, but if people don't have anything to go to, it doesn't matter if it's one-way traffic, no traffic, or dead-end streets. They're not going to show. 
No, I was just a comment. Just some comments very quickly. So this is uh, part of a continuing discussion the council's had, but this is just an example of um, why there's a, a real need for a, a, a strategic plan for downtown. Um, you know, now uh, with this most recent study, we're um, at uh, half a million dollars on um, uh, feasibility studies for traffic um, for just the downtown. And so um, it has been talked about before on the council how, um, you know, this piecemeal approach to developing downtown is uh, not a very efficient or effective way of going about uh, planning our downtown, and it's also a very costly way of doing it. Because now, like I said, we're at $586,000 on traffic studies just for downtown. So um, I think we would probably want to, um, at some point in time, with the Community and Economic Development uh, Committee talk again about um, the need for uh, a strategy for downtown. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, Mayor, as everybody who comes out of these council members know, the second meeting that we have during the month, the mayor comes up and gives a brief overview of what's been going on in the city of South Bay. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for this uh, monthly opportunity to uh, catch you up on uh, a little bit of uh, what's been going on in the administration and preview some uh, upcoming news in the city. Uh, first of all, last week on Monday, uh, for the first time we celebrated uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day as an official city holiday, so I just want to uh, thank the council once again for acting to make that possible. Uh, the annual breakfast at the Century Center was well attended as always, and the assembly in March here uh, from the county city building over to the Century Center went well. Uh, we also had an opportunity in recent weeks to recognize the community's success in having a year with zero fire fatalities. Uh, this is a pretty rare occurrence, unfortunately. As a matter of fact, we can't find a record of that having happened in the past. Obviously, that's a mixture of good preparation and good fortune, uh, but to the extent that uh, it does reflect very good work in both fire suppression and fire prevention. Uh, by the uh, City of South Bend Fire Department. Certainly, uh, I want to congratulate them. And in order to try to keep it that way, we need to really build on awareness among citizens. Uh, I'm pleased to note that there's a new fire safety house facility. I can remember as a child going through the old one. It, uh, it's a great way for kids to learn what to do. Uh, they fill it up with simulated uh, smoke, which is non-toxic, and use it for trainings. If you're interested in sponsoring or supporting uh, any kind of training in your district, I encourage you to reach out to the fire department. They are uh, very eager to uh, use this, uh, this new asset that we recently uh, were able to line up in the city. Um, a little bit of recent news, I joined a bipartisan coalition of mayors from around the country, uh, led by Mayor Bloomberg of New York, called uh, Mayors Against Illegal Guns. South Bend, as we all know, has had its share of gun violence in the last, last year. This group advocates mainly for three things, uh, criminal background checks for all gun buyers, uh, getting military-style military weapons and ammunition off the streets, uh, and it works toward making gun trafficking a federal crime the way a lot of other trafficking offenses are. Uh, I would note that uh, these submissions are supported not only by a majority of Americans, uh, but actually by a majority of members of the NRA. Uh, I, my fellow mayors and I regard them as common sense and thought it was time to add our voice to the uh, chorus. Uh, on a much lighter note, this is Winter Restaurant Week. Uh, kicked off in downtown South Bend. It's actually more of a restaurant two weeks ago on until uh, Sunday, February 3rd. By all reports, uh, the uh, downtown restaurants are exceeding their wildest expectations in terms of the numbers of people coming through. So it's a great opportunity there. Uh, not only dinner deals for breakfast and lunch, but uh, that everybody will be encouraged to take part in that. And finally, from last week, uh, the South Bend Symphony announced a uh, guest pianist performing on February 16th for the South Bend Symphony Orchestra that you might find uh, interesting uh, for part of the uh, virtual performance there. I encourage you to buy a ticket and uh, uh, see for yourself. Um, coming up this week, on Wednesday, we have a uh, swearing-in ceremony for the next Chief of Police, Ron Keatsman. That's going to be at 1.30. Uh, Ron is very eager to meet with uh, council members. I thank the council for hosting that uh, meeting group that's been planned and uh, urge you to join us in welcoming to the uh, community and the city uh, at that uh, change of command ceremony. A little bit of hiring news. The city has hired Paul South as the new director of streets. Uh, Paul most recently was working for the Michigan Department of Transportation, but lives in this community. Also has a very impressive military background, including the leadership of a provincial reconstruction team in Afghanistan as part of his commitment to the uh, Indiana National Guard. We think he's going to do a great job. Uh, eager to uh, have him get to know the council as well. Um, 
Tomorrow will be at Adams High School. It's the Clay Adams game, and it's also the 100th anniversary of uh, basketball in South Bend, so we have a proclamation for that. And uh, also in the good news category, it is this week that we will officially get uh, our fellows from the Code for America program, which is continuing to uh, attract a lot of positive attention to South Bend. In fact, I just got a letter of congratulations from the CEO of the Indianapolis Colts congratulating our city for being one of the city's names, Code for America State, this year. So I wanted to pass that along. Um, big issues for the coming year. Uh, first of all, looking forward to finding new ways to strengthen communication with the administration of the council. So uh, I want to uh, thank members of the council for uh, discussing that uh, with my office and looking forward in particular to the opportunity to have meetings with the officers of this council uh, every time that there is a council meeting a few days in advance of that so that we can get on the same page about the agenda. I uh, also want to publicly acknowledge the work of Councilman Oliver Davis, uh, who has been working very hard on the uh, Calvert Street neighborhood water concerns, along with a number of other council members and members of our administration. Uh, I've asked the public works and legal departments to come up with additional ways that the city can be supportive. Uh, our hearts go out to the homeowners who are affected, and we're continuing to uh, closely work with the council and uh, stay very close to that situation. Um, Tomorrow, council members can expect to receive an advanced copy of the forthcoming vacant and abandoned housing task force uh, report. So it's not quite ready for release, uh, but wanted to be sure that council members had an opportunity to review it and looking forward to getting any feedback that you would have. Uh, because we do want to be ready to release this in mid-February, I would ask that uh, any thoughts that you'd like to share, uh, if possible, please do that uh, within uh, a week from today. Uh, we will have that uh, report in your inboxes by uh, close of business tomorrow. Um, one more uh, thing and update on the city's website. Uh, we're working on placing translate buttons on the website. We realize that uh, the city is only transparent and accessible if it can be transparent and accessible to all. And so we want to make sure that uh, it is easily translated, at least by machine translation, uh, into the language of any uh, resident who needs information on the city. So we'll be adding that functionality shortly. And. Um, so I said uh, that was it. But one last thing, which is I'm looking forward to next month, we're going to switch up our order, and instead of the regular uh, reports of city offices at the second council meeting, we'll use the uh, annual statutory update in the first council meeting for me to provide information on the uh, fiscal health of the city. It'll be sort of a, a preview of some of the financial dimensions of uh, the bigger picture, which we'll share in a full state of the city address, which will be scheduled for March. Uh, with that, thanks for the opportunity for the update, and look forward to seeing you soon. All right, thank you. Now may I have a motion to resolve the committee of the whole? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Committee of the Home to order. This is a portion of the Council's meeting where the bill was given a second reading and public hearing. I do ask that Council members allow the petitioner to give his or her report prior to as, um, addressing questions of them. Also, the question that you would address to the petitioner should pertain to the bill or the ordinance that is before us. At this time, we would like to ask Mr. John Boyd to do a second reading to Bill 0 2 Public hearing on a bill to vacate the following described property. Calvert Street from Webster Street to Kemble Avenue being 80 foot in width and 1,248.5 feet in length. Thank you. Is there a committee report? Yes, ma'am. I think I'm going to have a substitute version. Sorry. Zero two. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. There's a motion that has been seconded that we will hear the substitute version of Bill 02 13. All those in favor of the motion, may we vote? Aye. Right. Those opposed, the motion carries. At this time, we'd like to entertain a committee report. Yes, Madam Chair. The Public Works and Property Vacation had a meeting this afternoon. So we're bringing Bill number 02 13 substitute version to the full council with a fair report. Thank you. Is the petitioner present? We do ask that you come to the podium, you state your name, and give us a brief summary of the bill that is before us. James Whitson. I'm with DLZ, 
2211 East Jefferson Boulevard, South Bend, Indiana. On behalf of the City of South Bend and the State of Indiana, I am requesting the vacation of an unimproved portion of Calvert Street from Webster Street to Campbell Avenue. This vacation of the real property is needed to provide a contiguous site for the forthcoming improvements to the Indiana National Guard site. Thank you. Council members, do you have any questions for the petitioner at this time? No. Thank you so much. We'll now move to the public hearing portion. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in support of Substitute Bill 02-13? Anyone present wishing to speak in support of this bill? Seeing no one, is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition? Again, I see no one. The public hearing portion is now closed. Council members, what is your pleasure? Recommendation. Second that. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion that is before us, my reader vote. Aye. Those opposed, the motion carries. Substitute Bill Rule 2 will be sent to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Mr. Boyd, will you please give second reading to Bill 03-13. Public hearing on the bill to vacate the following described property. 160.39 feet of the right of way of, e of the east side of Niles Avenue at the intersection of Jefferson Boulevard and Niles Avenue. Is there a committee report? Yes, Madam Chair. The Public Works and Property Vacation Committee met again this afternoon on the green bill zero zero three thirteen to the full council with a report. Thank you. Is the petitioner present? Again, we ask that you come to the podium, state your name, and address, and give us a brief summary of uh, Bill 03-13. Roger Nott, Adam Marsh Consultants, 750 Lincoln Ways, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, this portion of right-of-way is at uh, Jefferson Boulevard, and it's a triangular-shaped portion that is 169 feet along the east side of Niles Avenue and 19 and a half feet along the uh, north side of Jefferson. It is a remnant piece of land uh, that is left for many years uh, based on the original planning of the town of Rural back when South Bend was born. The developer, River Race Townhomes, has cooperated with the city and dedicated a strip of land north of this area for permanent right-of-way and a utility easement. This is more or less a housekeeping situation to try to bring everything into balance. Thank you. Thank you. Council members, do you have any questions of the petitioner? Mm -hmm. Council member Jeter? Is that, was that, I don't know, was there ever an environmental study done on that land over there because of the former construction? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I could ask Dave and that. Mr. Mann. Mr. Matthews, would you like to respond to the address for the record, please? Dave Matthews, uh, 215 East Colfax Avenue, downtown South Bend. Uh, we, uh, there, were two, there were two environmental reports done. Um, when the old Traeger sheet metal site was removed, mm -hmm. and then before I, when I purchased the land from the city, we did boring and tested for contamination and got a clean bill of health. Thank you. Council members, do you have any, any more questions of the petitioner? At this time, we move towards the, uh, to the public hearing regarding Bill 0 03 13. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in support of this bill? Take your big address, please. <laughs> Dave Matthews, 215 East Colfax Avenue, downtown South Bend. Just want to speak in favor of it and say thank you to the city and all of the uh, workers and engineers who pulled the CSO project on Niles Avenue together, which is kind of why we have to do this cleanup. The yeah, new street is great, and it's a lot easier for pedestrians to cross from the townhomes and uh, the development on the east to the Emporium restaurant site and the park. So, thank you for all the good work. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in support of this bill? Seeing no one, is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition? Again, I see no one. The public hearing is now closed. I'll move the favor right in the second. 
as we move and second it. All those in favor of the motion, may hear your vote. Aye. Uh -huh. Those opposed, the motion carries. Bill 3-13 will be sent to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Mr. Boyd, will you please give second reading to Bill 04-13. Public hearing on a bill to vacate the following described property. And your reservoir will take a portion of the right of way of Indiana Avenue located at the northwest intersection of said Indiana Avenue with Kendall Street. Is there a committee report? Yes, Madam Chair. The public works and property vacation met this afternoon and we bring Bill 04 13 to the full council with a favorable report. Okay, thank you. Petitioner, state your name and address, please. Mike Dan from the Antarctic Associates, 1643 Times Drive here in South Bend. Uh, what we're asking for is this for comes to approve the vacation portion of the Indiana Avenue and Indiana As we have uh, stated with council, we are in the process of retelling this property. This will help the owner of that property to do some expansion and we'll also clean up that particular intersection. Right now, there's a portion of Indiana Avenue with the sidewalk and the pavement that run over that portion of the property. So we're that Council members, do you have any questions? Thank you. We'll now move to the public hearing portion. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in support of Bill 04-13? See no one. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition? Again, I see no one. The public hearing is now closed. Move in favor of recommendation. Second. To move and second it. All those in favor of the motion, I hear your vote. Aye. Those opposed, the motion carries. Bill 04-13 will be sent to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Mr. Borden, will you please give second reading to 05-13, please? Public hearing on the bill to vacate the following described property. The first north south alley of Indiana Avenue located at the northwest intersection of Michigan Street from Madison Street, north to the first east lane of Madison Street, north to the first east lane of Michigan Street, from Madison Street, north to the first east west alley. Is there a committee report? Yes, Madam Chair, we have a full meeting today. Can we bring Bill 05-13 to the full council with a favorable report? Thank you. Is the petitioner present? James Lipson, DLZ Indiana, LLC, Wayne 11 East Jefferson Boulevard, South Bend, Indiana. On behalf of Beacon Health System, I am requesting the vacation of the remaining portion of the North South Alley between Madison Street, Marion Street, Main Street, and Michigan Street. This vacation of real property is needed to enhance the parking areas for the hospital staff and The vacation of, these, of this alley will allow more hospital re reconstruction standards and facilities. Are there any questions, council members, that you might have for the petitioner? Thank you. We'll now move to the public hearing portion. Is there anyone present wishing to speak on behalf of Bill 05-13? Seeing no one, is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition? Again, I see no one. The public hearing portion is now closed. Move favorable recommendation. Second. It's, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion, may hear your vote. Uh, those opposed, the motion carries. Bill 05 13 will be sent to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Mr. Vordy, will you please give second reading to Bill 01 13? Public hearing on the bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, adopting the City of South Bend's ADA transition plan mm -hmm. for pedestrian facilities in the public right of way. City Committee reports. Yes, Madam Chair, the Public Works and Public Vacation. At a meeting today, and we bring Bill number 01-13 to the full council with a favorable report. We do have a presenter before us. We ask that we speak to you in address, please. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, my name is Allegene DeRose. I'm the interim city attorney for the city of South Bend and also the city's ADA coordinator. A title II of the, of the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed by Congress in 1990. Uh, that act, along with the, its other provisions, prohibited discrimination against the disabled. As part of that process, the cities, states, and towns, local governments, and state governments, it's required to uh, prepare transition plans indicating how they will address barriers that exist in the public right-of-way for those who are disabled. 
to the city, to the city of South Bend's transition plan, which is which I'm privileged to present, uh, deals with the sidewalks, curb ramps, and crosswalks uh, within the city, uh, and it provides a blueprint and a, an action plan for making these areas uh, accessible to those who are disabled. This transition plan was also. Uh, compiled and, and prepared with the assistance of the Michiana Area Council of Government, MACOS, and it's similar to other transition plans that have been passed by, uh, by local government legislatures. We have made an effort here in South Bend to assure that this transition plan has public input. Uh, to that extent, the, pl the plan was posted on the city's website around December 18th of this past year. Uh, there was a, an article in the South Bend Tribune on January 7th indicating that the city was looking for comments. It was uh, reviewed by the Board of Works at a meeting on January 8th, 2013, and copies have been placed uh, in the city library, or the, in the uh, county library downtown branch, in the clerk's office, and in the Board of Works room. Uh, as of this date, we have not received any input from the public, but it is, as I said, consistent with plans that have been adopted uh, by other government agencies. Uh, just for history of South Bend, all new construction under the, uh, that has been done by the city since the passage of the ADA has been ADA compliant. And for the last 15 years or so, we've had a sidewalk and curb uh, program by which the city shared the cost of replacing sidewalks. All of those were done uh, in consistent with the ADA, in conformity with the ADA. The, uh, this ADA plan itself uh, identifies the priorities for the city to engage in, in, in ameliorating um, those public rights of way that need help, uh, and uh, it's based on Department of Justice regulations. The highest priority goes to location serving government facilities, and then to commercial and employment centers, and then to other areas. And so a detailed compilation of all the city sidewalks, curves, et cetera, is uh, on the file with the common council and open to the public, and, and those could be reviewed by everyone. I, I think that most of the areas that we're most concerned with that address the courts and the, the main government service agencies, all of those public rights of way have been uh, made ADA compliant. Councilman Lewis, do you have any questions? Councilman Oliver Davis? Yes, Madam Chair. Again, as we mentioned this afternoon, we'd just like to, to highlight the standard of the next report and the need for us to include ADA issues as it relates to weather. Um, given the fact that we do live in a snow belt, so while this has been a rather mild winter considering our standards, it still has caused days where snow has been on our sidewalks and uh, public areas, and so therefore we have done a good job of looking at our streets, but we want to make sure that we do a good job of cleaning out the uh, sidewalks. We passed um, regarding the homeowners taking care of the sidewalks a couple of years ago, but again, that did not cover for the governmental um, areas and streets that are taking care of, because I literally have seen some of our citizens having to ride their wheelchairs in the streets and other places to avoid um, snow. Um, areas that have been covered and ice that has been out there on our streets. So please, um, as soon as possible, let's to, to do that. And I ask our administration to make sure that our, um, our mayor, uh, our new street department person, I believe, or, um, who will be in charge of that, to make sure that they can cover that when we do have snowstorms, um, our key areas of our sidewalks, because when we see um, members who are having to use the streets and others to avoid sidewalks that have ice and snow, it's very um, uncomfortable and disconcerting. Thank you, Council Member Davis. We will address that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Council members, any other questions of the petitioner? No. Seeing that we're now moving to the public hearing portion, is there anyone present wishing to speak in support of the 01-13? Seeing no one, is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition of this particular bill? Again, I see no one. The public hearing is now closed. Council members, what is your pleasure?
Move it to L113 be sent to full council for favorable recommendation. Yes, sir. Okay, move and second it. All those in favor of the motion, I hear your vote. Aye. Those opposed, the motion carries. Bill 01-13 will be sent to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Mr. Board, you please give second reading to Bill 06-13. Public hearing on a bill with the city of South Bend, Indiana, amending the maximum salary and wages of certain non-bargaining employees of the city of South Bend, Indiana for the calendar year 2013. Is there a committee report? Just want to share the personnel finance committee had a public hearing on Bill 613 this afternoon that comes to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. We do have a petitioner, our city controller. State your name and address for the record, please. Please, Council Member White, Council Mark, New York City Controller, with offices on the 12th floor of this building. Uh, Bill 0613 before you is a, a correction of the scrivener's error. Uh, we have, a, as you all know, in our salary ordinance, we have a, a number of uh, positions with uh, assignment of wages. Uh, there was a transition made in the 2012 salary ordinance in which rather than putting in $42,058, we had $40,000. $158, and when adding the 2% pay increase, uh, we have set a number that uh, in the 13 orders of 41902 when it should have been $43,757. So we ask for your uh, approval uh, to uh, change, to correct uh, the, the error that had been made uh, in the uh, salary ordinance that was submitted as part of the 2014 process. Thank you, Council members. Do you have any questions, council members? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Neal. We now move to the public hearing portion. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in support of the 06-13? Anyone present wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing no one, the public hearing portion is now closed. Move a favorable recommendation. Is it moved and seconded? All those in favor of the motion, I hear your vote. Aye. Those opposed, the motion carries. Bill 06-13 will be sent to the full council with a favorable recommendation. I will now entertain a motion to rise from the committee to hold and put back to the full council. Is it moved and seconded? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Those opposed, the motion carries. So council is now in session. Third reading of 213, please. Third reading on the bill to vacate the following described property, Calvert Street, from West Street to Kendall Avenue being eight foot in width and 1,248.5 feet in length. May I have a motion to amend the version? So moved. Second. All in favor of that? Aye. Any opposition? Now I may have a motion for the amended version of that. Move for the passage of amended version 1302. 1302. Okay, John Gordy. Mr. Scott? Aye. Mr. Henry Davis? Aye. Mrs. Sherry? Aye. Dr. Fred Aye. Dr. Bonner? Aye. Vice President Oliver Davis? Aye. Council Member Aye. Mr. Furrow? Aye. President Aye. Aye. Thank you. 313. Third reading on the bill would vacate the following described property. 160.39 feet of the right of way of the east side of Niles Avenue at the intersection of Jefferson Boulevard and Niles Avenue. Move for passage of bill 03-13. Second. Mr. Woody. Mr. Henry Lewis. More clarification, sorry. Um, 313, was that an amended bill? No. no. It wasn't? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I. Mrs. Sheriff? Aye. Dr. Burroughs? Aye. Dr. Burroughs? Aye. Aye. Vice President Lewis? Aye. Council Member Wright? Aye. Mr. Furrow? Aye. Oh. Mr. Scott? Aye. And President Lewis? Aye. 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 Thank you. 413, please. Third reading on the bill to vacate the following describes property. And everybody will be free of the right of way of Indiana Avenue located at the northwest intersection of said Indiana Avenue with Kendall Street. With the passage, passage of Bill 04-13. Second. Mr. Roy. Mr. Schrader. Right. Dr. Furrow. 
Dr. Bartman. Aye. Vice President Davis. Aye. Council Member Wood. Aye. Mr. Sturdy. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Henry Wood. Aye. And President Davis. Aye. Aye. Thank you. 513. Third reading on the bill to vacate the following described properties. First North South Alley, west of Michigan Street, from Madison Street North to the first East West Alley. This is the passage of 513. Thank you. Mr. Dr. Furley. Dr. Warner. Aye. Vice President Davis. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Mr. Furley. Aye. Mr. Scott? Aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Mrs. Shirley? Aye. President Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, 113. Third reading on the bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, adopting the City of South Bend's ADA transition plan for pedestrian facilities and the public right of way. Move for passage of Bill 01-13. Aye. And the second? Move for Dr. Ron. Aye. Vice President Donald Davis. Aye. Council Member Wright. Aye. Mr. Furley. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Henry Davis. Aye. Mrs. Shelley. Aye. Dr. Furley. Aye. President Davis. Aye. Nine. Six thirteen. Third reading on a bill of the City of South Bend, Indiana, amending the maximum salary and wages of certain non-bargaining employees of the City of South Bend, Indiana, for the calendar year 2013. Over the passage of 613. Second. Mr. Rudy. Vice President Barbara Aye. Council Member Wright. Aye. Mr. Furrick. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Henry Aye. Mrs. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furrick. Aye. Dr. Warner. Aye. President Aye. 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 Thank you. Now on the resolutions. Let's go to 1314. The resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, recommending that the Century Center Board of Managers publicly discuss the ACOM report, then prepare requests for proposals which truly reflect the best interest of the City of South Bend for the management of Century Center. I believe we have to hear a motion for the amended amended amended. Okay. All right. Then this was a joint committee, so if the committee chairs would like to give report from. All right, thank you. Now the presenter will be Council Member Davis. Okay. Motion to hear the amended version. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the amended version. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In the opposition. Thank you. Council Member Davis. Second. Um, we're on April 10th. 1973 Control and operate the city center. And whereas in 1973, orders further called for initial nine on the board who have now more than five of whom shall be members of one political party, who shall be representative of the mayor, five appointments, including one wholesale wholesale tax board representative, two Michigan area residents, one South Bay resident. And one representative of the South Bay Community School Corporation and the Power Council, four representing one from the Park and Recreation Board, one representing the Jeffrey Museum, and one representing the South Bay Art Center, and one representing the Michigan Arts and Science Council. Whereas 
The 1970 ordinance created a civic center authority further provided for the to submit an annual budget to the county council in the same manner as the city department. Whereas October 11, 1982, as a part of the requirements of Indiana Code 36, 4, 9, 4, Ordinance Number 710882 was passed by the County Council of Formal Amendments of South Bend Municipal Code by establishing the Executive Department and other administrative functions which the city considers necessary to perform essentially and the administrative functions entire to fulfill the needs of the city citizens. Which specifically includes the continuous of the South Bend Civic Center Board of Managers pursuant to Indiana Code 3165. Whereas in late 2006, we were affected with Philadelphia Bay Company to hire the next city center. And in February of 2011, the general manager resigned with a complaint. The general manager being hired thereafter. And we were asked in December of 2020, the board of managers to I think the question, uh, Mr. Davis, is, I saw Mr. Uh, Oliver Davis, 
I think the positions are all filled, having viewed or having heard the statutory description of the nature of the positions. I'm not sure they're filled in compliance with the statute, which, is, which has been an, an oversight. So that's... I should have said correctly what I feel. I feel we're not, and I think that's what I mean. Yeah, I'm not sure that we're going to so again, the question that's you know, just your answer begs the question, if there are people who are holding those positions who are not um, justified to be in those positions, then how can decisions really be made? Well, um, the city attorney not being made the best, but the city attorney is the best. I want to rely on our legal opinion and the fact that it's time to define how or if those individuals should be removed from the city so they can be paid. So we will be providing the state all of those local workers. Um, so I'm trying to, um, mean, topic. Yes, city attorney, um, shedding a light on that kind of, because, um, if people are there just to be, be in positions but not there to uh, have the authority to be there. I mean, if we just have nine people up here, but there's no authority up here, the fact that we have nine up here does not give us any authority unless we are duly bound to be here. The original ordinance was passed in 1973. Many of those uh, entities that are listed in the ordinance do not exist. Uh, and this was just brought to the interim of the attorney's attention uh, this afternoon. And again, uh, we have been able to work together to cure anything we can call the past year of changes. Uh, however, I think for the benefit of the public, it's important to know that the five appointees from the mayor uh, are in place and the four appointees from the council are in place. Those that are expiring, however, uh, council president uh, Peter has made that uh, uh, voice uh, acknowledgement twice now in public meetings and those are the applications that are coming in this Thursday. So again, looking forward, we're aware of a potential problem, but we, we're discussing it and we will address it. So that potential problem should, can be remedied by us um, amending the um, um, current 1973 um, document. Again, in 1982, uh, City Council, with the City Administration, did do the minimum amount of requirements that were required uh, to streamline uh, what boards and commissions were on record with the City. We'll again review that. And from that moment, but, down, down. But as far as consistent with state law, state law just says that you shall have nine. We are friends with that. We are consistent mm -hmm. with that. Okay. Uh, that's key people. Hey, thank you for coming today. You know, one thing I really want to make sure that you don't lose sight of, uh, as the reason why this is the uh, uh, document is before us, and we wanted to make sure that we uh, participate in the, in the uh, transparent, and very uh, inclusive process as we make the Central Center, given the losses that we have, have suffered or incurred uh, due to either a management, the city of South Bend, or whomever. But we're losing uh, over a million dollars a year uh, with the Central Center. And it's uh, to our fiduciary responsibility that this is able to the budget. Uh, that uh, we make sure that we don't lose that kind of money year in year out without, you know, having some sort of uh, answer to it. And as a result, we haven't had an answer. Uh, we are working to obviously find a solution for it. Uh, we have not been able to. The council uh, asked the administration, I think maybe back in July, not to receive any contracts to go to the because of the matter of the administration right now. Uh, as a result, the uh, contract was extended anyway until June 2013 without us, you know, uh, having to say so. And so since those things are like water on the bridge at this point, I want, we want to make sure, per this resolution, that we are including in further talks 
made decisions like that when you may have it in the dark or in the background, so we're writing the check. I don't think that it's a great idea for us to see what the blank check to come up with a million dollar loss this year. Uh, this last thing, Mr. President, um, I agree with what you're saying with this resolution, and I also would just like to highlight the fact that, and along with whatever uh, management team or individual person that may result out of this, I would hope that the council, along with the administration, would really look again and revisit the put a double effort into the whole Chase Tower emphasis because of the fact that that had a hotel implication with that matter. And um, for us to really put all the heat on any kind of management team or any kind of individual without taking into consideration the Chase Tower to me is um, not the best because one of the reasons when I just went over to Fort Wayne last year for a meeting, you could see the hotels that are right around the civic center that are there and the only reason why it's helping. And so for us to just have um, the double tree downtown and, um, and not necessarily have the quality of hotels um, right in the downtown area. I mean, you can go up to Notre Dame, Roseville, and uh, Mishawak and all the other places, but when you go to the city of like Fort Wayne, there are hotels and conventions are right in the heart. And so, and that's why I would, I would again raise the issue that Chase Tower needs to be put on high priority again by our mayor and his team because you cannot have one without the other. Okay, I actually uh, have a fact something that obviously uh, we participated on some resolutions earlier this year, well, actually last year into this year, uh, as it relates to Chase Tower. And uh, as we are studying our proven to show us that we can't have a health convention center if we don't have healthy uh, or great hotels to go or enough hotel rooms to surround the area to be connected to the convention center or directly adjacent to. Uh, where, where there will be a walking distance, that makes it very difficult for so many uh, obviously schools to come to South Indiana when we're talking about convention, convention. So, uh, I, 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 I agree. Okay, thank you. Council Member Shea, let's get back to us. Sure, um, so uh, I'll try to not to be redundant, um, but uh, I had talked briefly uh, this afternoon at committee about um, the uh, uh, real background behind Bill 1314 and um, the ACON study and then the RFP process. Um, just from a high level, I'll um, say that one of my uh, big concerns here was uh, that uh, the process was not, in fact, uh, transparent or inclusive. Um, that, of course, is something that we all are striving for when it comes to uh, local government. The other issue that I had expressed with uh, regards to um, the Century Center as a part of our overall downtown strategy, um, we do uh, put an enormous amount of money uh, into our downtown, and um, I want to make sure that when we are doing that, we are providing a good return on um, investment uh, for our taxpayers. And when I say that, I'm saying that regardless of the source of revenue, whether it is uh, general fund dollars, whether it's federal dollars, or whether it's hotel motel tax, um, in my mind, uh, it doesn't matter. A dollar is a dollar, and I want to make sure we're spending every dollar wisely. Um, now, uh, specific to the RFP um, that uh, came out of, of this um, that we're discussing here tonight, um, I think the big question here uh, is what is the best management strategy for the Century Center? Uh, this discussion is not a new discussion. In fact, I, I have spoke with a local leader on this topic, um, Carl King, a well-respected individual in the community. Um, this conversation goes back to actually uh, 2006. Carl had sent an email um, sharing his thoughts on this issue with uh, the then council members, um, Ann Pazello and um, President Dieter, making his recommendation that um, the Century Center uh, be combined with um, the Morris Performing Arts Center and the Palais Royale um, so that we could see economies of scale um, in terms of uh, management strategy, um, potential cost savings for the taxpayers, and uh, we've seen um, 
a great performance out of the Morris Center. So the hope would be that we would see improved performance at the Century Center. Turning specifically to the Century Center, I think the big question is, yes, there is, of course, um, uh, an annual loss. Um, I, you know, uh, it, it's not a comfortable situation to say that that's just to be expected, but um, other people and other uh, municipalities say that that is uh, unfortunately uh, what these centers do, the focus is the economic impact. Um, so focusing exclusively on the economic impact, you will see that since we outsourced the management to Global Spectrum, we've seen a consistent um, decline in the economic impact, and the ACOM study shows that um, the estimated economic impact of the um, uh, Century Center in 2011 was only 7.9 million, which um, I know is comparing apples to oranges when you look at different methodologies, but um, that being said, there's a significant um, decline in what this center is providing for our community. So I think what the council, I, I think the reason behind the 1314 was that um, we want to make sure that uh, if we are issuing an RFP, that it is um, uh, certainly seeking what would be the, the best solution for the community. And um, we are asking that uh, the Board of Century Center Managers give, um, uh, give this a uh, little bit more time and consideration before rushing to judgment. Okay. Thank you. So is that a motion? Uh, that is a motion. All right. We have a second on that. Second. Mr. Wardy. To adopt. To adopt. As amended. As amended. 13, 14. Yes. Go. Yeah. So, Aye. Mr. Perlman, thank you. Uh, Mr. Scott, aye. Mr. Henry, aye. Mrs. Shea, aye. Dr. Perlman, aye. Uh, Dr. Hart, aye. Vice President, aye. Aye. And President, aye. Uh, Passes by the vote of 8 to 1. Thank you. Now, let's get to 1307. <laughs> Hello, Indiana, recommending that the Century Council Indiana, approving a petition on the area of the Zone of Appeals for the property located at 127 West Washington Street, South Bend, Indiana. Thank you. Mr. Lyons. So I'm not sure. Good. We'll go to you first. Yes, questions. Committee report. Uh, the ZNA committee met this afternoon and uh, sends to the full council a favorable recommendation. All right. Thank you very much. Presenter, you can just give a brief synopsis of what you gave earlier today to the committee. Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, I'm aware of Isaac Gower, and uh, we are like wishing to add Cassidy to our right now. Excellent report. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For those who would like to speak in favor, Everybody come on up and, and line up there. Uh, yeah. Well, I hope you all have forgotten to do that. Just need your name and address, and if everybody else has the same, similar, same recommendation, or if we could condense that, it would be great. So go right ahead. Uh, but I wanted to say that we compiled a list of 
of uh, businesses who support us, and there are 15 signatures on that list, and there are also several more of the other verbal support. Um, so, up to the last um, vision that many of us have for downtown South Bend is not just a place to eat, that's not a dating district, and it's certainly not a place to organize a place to live in the gym, it's a place to property, and adding the Burlington to the body art to downtown South Bend is a school gallery to make things up there. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Sarah, could you speak up a little? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
I understood that there was a lot of you know resistance in the very beginning, but you stuck at it, and I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I hope that, that uh, this will be a value uh, to, to the downtown area, and, and that we can continue to support you in your endeavors as a small business in the downtown area. And again, thank you for uh, your investment. Okay, thank you, Mr. Scott. Uh, I just want to say, you know, we talk about downtown, um, it isn't all one type of market or type of business. Um, you know, the one thing we forget, there's a lot of niche markets in the world, and with those niche markets, it's revenue streams. Uh, there are revenue streams that, there are things that I would not spend my money on that some people would spend all their money on. And uh, we got to consider that. The best part of helping downtown is diversity. And uh, on the pick. Any other council member has a comment? I'd like to thank Mr. Martin and everybody that came here tonight to speak in favor of that. I think it's going to be a great thing for downtown and hope everyone in here. I don't know, Mary, do we have a council tattoo that everybody has yet? Or? We can work on that. Keep that confidential. Any recommendations? Yes, you can. Um, move for the adoption of Bill. Uh, 1307. Mr. Mordy. Mr. Furlow. Aye. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Henry. Aye. Mr. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furlow. Aye. Dr. Weber. Aye. Vice President Dr. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. President Deans. Aye. 9-0. Thank you. Let's go to 13-8. That was that was for you. No, 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 no. Thank you. Can I report? Uh, the Zoning and Annexation Committee met today in terms of the full council favorable report. No recommendation. No, no recommendation on 1308. All right, Mr. Lyons. Thank you. All right, and do we have a presenter? Presenter for 1308. Our council attorney. I would go forward with the public hearing and then. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. All right, anyone like to speak in favor of 1308? In favor of 1308, any opposition to 1308? Council recommendation. Um, did the, 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 the 1308 be defeated? Second. Mr. Roy. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mr. Henry Lewis. Aye. Mrs. Shane. Aye. Dr. Burke. Aye. Dr. Miller. Aye. Vice President Davis. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Mr. Burke. Aye. President Davis. Aye. 1308 is defeated 9-0. Thank you. 1308, man. The resolution of the Common Council will continue to stop the Navy Act approving a petition of the Area Board of Zone Appeal for the property located at 819 Oak Street. Thank you very much. I guess earlier today, under your committee, you discussed the full and cons of this, correct? Correct. All right. What happens? The uh, full council favorable. A recommendation. All right, Mr. Lyons. Mark Lyons is a building All right, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Lyons? Negative. Presenter. And Dr. Papers. Huh? And Dr. Papers. And I think you dropped off the paper. Right. Right. Okay, and then 724 West Marshall in South Bend. Uh, this is a 37-foot wide lot of 
plan is to tear down the vacant and abandoned house, build a new house on the island. Depending on the Broken All right, Great, thank you. Anyone like to speak in favor or opposition? Council, move for the passage of Bill, uh, adoption of Bill 1309. Mr. Horty. Mr. Henry. Mr. Henry. Mr. Henry. Mr. Aye. Mr.
um, coming on from March the 23rd as we celebrate um, Vice President Scott's Colfax birthday. All right, thank you. Also, under unfinished business uh, for the Tribune, do you know when you're going to print that for the committees? Hopefully before the 31st? Yeah, uh, we're going to have those files on Friday. Okay. Because we're, uh, overall, we're, a lot, we're down a lot from applications of where we were, so. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Any new business? All right, privilege of the floor. Anybody wants to talk to us at this time for three minutes about something we haven't covered? You need your name and address, and there's some, something specific you want us to follow up, you need to fill out a form. If not, speak your piece. You have three minutes. I heard you when we weren't talking, when we were going up to the public. Uh, the second thing I got, I've got a call right now, is that on Monday King's uh, 21st, uh, I had a police officer put up 50 times in a snowstorm and give me a $50 ticket for parking in the handicapped parking lot at 4 30 in the morning. And I was very offended by him because the car had been moved in two days. So Phoebe told me, you know, a license plate was covered. He didn't turn off the window and look and see that I have a plaque in there by the mirror. And he left a $50 ticket on it. So I want to know, I've been talking, talking to the council. I've been speaking out in the community, and I'm going to be in charge. If it is, it's not going to work too well. Because at 4 30 in the morning, I think I can find something to do instead of putting 50 other people to that car in the snow store. And I came and checked, everything is legal. So, I would like to find out when I'm going to be hit now. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak to the council? To see none, we are done. Yeah. Thank you.